Next up, we have something extremely exciting. I'm actually very, very, um, very happy to invite this person on, on stage because what he's got to say is something that even I want to learn because I still can't totally get it. Okay? For many, many years, right, we were taught that the most important thing is that you set your tone at minus 20, you make sure nothing exceeds minus 12, you know, you're in a good place. Okay? And for, I think, easily, I would say decades, a long, long time, we were taught that that was the way to go. And then they found out recently that the standard was not sufficient, that it was actually not enough, and it was not accurate enough to, to make sure that, um, that the viewing experience at home in terms of audio was, was uh, enjoyable. And so what we're going to have is we're going to have Kevin come today to really explain to us in detail how the standard works, how it differs from the original audio standard, and how to mix within it. So he'll actually be a mixture of slides and demo again. Okay, so let me introduce Kevin. Okay, so Kevin's a great guy. He's a sound designer. His uh, primary role as a sound designer and composer has led him to a wide variety of projects, servicing clients ranging from agencies to production houses on various media content and formats. His work on short films has made its rounds worldwide to festivals such as Busan International Film Short Film Festival and Clermont Ferrand International Film Festival, respectively. Most recently, Kevin worked on the feature film *The Sacred Arrow* by acclaimed Tibetan filmmaker. Correct me if I'm wrong, Pima Sidan? Sidan? Okay, okay, as close as possible. Which was nominated for several categories at the 17th Shanghai International Film Festival. And he also worked on the HBO Asia horror series Grace. Okay? He has worked on and supervised work on our drama series such as Game Plan, Fighting Spider Season 2, Journey West, Marry Me, all of which have garnered strong viewership ratings. Okay? But not only is uh, Kevin interested to practice. He's also giving back. Okay? With his wealth of knowledge, Kevin decided to share by lecturing at SAE Institute Singapore. He continues to take on supervisory roles for film and audio students at Nian Poly, Lasan Patnam Film School, and NTU uh, Art Design Media, as well as Wiki Wee School of Communication on their graduating projects. Please join me in welcoming Kevin Teo. Okay, hi, my name is Kevin. Okay, so uh, essentially, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ian first for inviting me to give a talk about this. So essentially we'll be kind of like discussing on the different, uh, or at least the new standards in loudness for broadcast. Now just uh, bear with me that uh, I don't want to sound like I'm coming across as like I'm telling you how to do things, but pretty much I think for a lot of us in the audio industry, we are also uh, at the same time trying to fully understand you know, exactly you know, what's the difference between the old standards and the new standards. And, exactly how we can actually make full use of it. Is it any better? Is it any worse? Okay, so, okay, so we'll go through some terms and definitions or exactly why we even have this loudness standards. Okay, the Calm Act. How many of you guys have actually heard of this? One, two, and... Okay, cool. Okay, so we'll be elaborating at least on what the Calm Act is all about. Okay, or the different loudness standards involved, okay, what's the difference between LUFS, LKFS versus RMS uh, measurements, okay, for those of us who are a little bit more audio-centric. Okay, I'll also be going through a little bit of a practical demonstration okay, in terms of using some of the different meterings as well as some considerations for us to maybe uh, bring back home and ponder upon, hopefully. Okay, so some of the terms and definitions, okay, things like decibels, okay, DBFS, some of these uh, acronyms you guys may actually come across in terms of the different technical spec sheet okay, that you receive from either MediaCorp or from uh, National Geographic, Discovery Channel, so on and so forth, or any kind of uh, broadcast network. Okay, so DBFS relative to full scale, okay, used in digital to analog equipment as well as analog to digital. RMS, which would be root mean squared, okay, is basically the measurement of the average loudness over a specific period of time. Okay, loudness units. Okay, then of course, a little bit easier. DAW is essentially all our digital audio workstations like Pro Tools, Cubase, Nuendo, so and so forth. Anyone who is working in post production or even the music industry that is using. Okay, and of course your NLE systems like Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro, Avid Media Composer, so on and so forth. Okay, which is all your NLE uh, editing systems. Okay, dynamic range essentially the points between the loudest uh, points of the audio as well as the softest points. So essentially, from the loudest to the softest, that essentially is considered your dynamic range. Okay. On top of that, we have things like a limiter. So what exactly is limiter? Okay, essentially it controls the digital peak levels of an audio signal by capping the output okay, at a specific or specified level. So like in the case of broadcast, usually what's the output peak that is allowed minus 10 dB, right? I'm sure you guys have come across. Yes? No? 
Okay, cool. Okay, so in terms of the different meterings, okay, that you may come across, so just as an example, okay, on the left you see is the level meters on Pro Tools, okay, on the right is what you see in potentially in uh, Adobe Premiere. Sorry, I didn't have access to Final Cut Pro, so not to ostracize, but yeah, today is not a Premiere centric thing. Uh. Okay, so essentially in terms of the read, the readings, right, essentially you're looking at the entire full scale, we're starting at zero dB, so that will be your digital peak. Okay, in terms of the fader itself, okay, essentially it's set to Unity at zero dB, or sometimes we refer to as SOL, standard operating levels. Okay, then at the same time, okay, some things that I think a lot of us would be quite familiar with. Okay, can everyone read the text? Yeah, I'm sure you guys have come across Okay, your technical spec sheet. Okay, I've just pulled out examples from NetGeo as well as Discovery. So they will always have this little column or section, okay, that specifies the loudness levels, okay? And you will probably come across these things that says, okay, the dynamic range of the audio material must be suitable for broadcast. What do they mean by that? So it's got to conform to this ITU RBS1770 standard, okay, which dictates that the overall average loudness of a program should be averaging at about minus 24 LKFS plus minus 1 dB worth of dynamic range, okay? As compared to before where the last time round, okay, all you had to worry about is that your levels do not exceed beyond minus 10 dB in terms of digital peak, but now it's not so simple anymore, okay? So why do we even have these new standards in place? Okay, so you'll find this not just in NetGeo, but Discovery, MediaCorp, or any kind of a broadcaster Okay, uh, worth mentioning, they will be uh, enforcing this. Okay, of course, in Europe, it will be a slightly different measurement, which is based on LUFS of minus 23. Okay, but otherwise, it's based uh, primarily on the foundations of ITU RBS 1770. Okay? Now, why do we have these standards in the first place? Any ideas? Okay, at least pertaining to both long form and short form. Uh, content that we see on air, okay? Of course, long form will be things like your drama series, your documentaries, uh, trailers, uh, sorry, not trailers. Uh, yeah, drama, docu, so on and so forth, variety programs, okay? Short form will be things like your 30, 30 second, 60 second commercials, okay? So why do we have these new standards? Now, the main thing is that audiences are complaining that it's too loud. Every time they are watching their favorite drama series, you know, and I'm sure, how many of you guys have actually encountered before? Maybe not so much now, but in the past, when you're watching your favorite show, suddenly it jumps to commercial break, and then the levels just suddenly hit you right in the face. Anybody? See, this is a cause for concern. Okay? And it's not just that. If you're watching, say, for example, on one channel, and you switch over to another channel, be it our local free-to-air or cable networks, you'll notice that the loudness also varies across different channels as well. Agree, disagree? Okay, cool. Okay, so, too loud, that's one problem, okay? Essentially, there are huge differences in the, in the perceived loudness between different program content, both long form and short form, as well as different channels, okay, depending on the broadcast network, okay? What's, what's the cause of this, okay? A lot of times it's due to over-compression. Now, what is over-compression? The whole point of compression essentially is to control the dynamic range of the audio. So, from the loudest peaks to the softest uh, sounds, okay, everything gets so-called squashed. Okay, and essentially you get over compression. And that itself affects the loudness okay, of the entire program. So we are no longer dealing with just purely digital peaks because there are some tools that a lot of uh, audio engineers uh, may use or even some non-audio audio professionals may use. So what we have is a limiter like what we mentioned earlier on. Okay, okay excessive limiting of the dynamic range and in a lot of cases, the misuse of Dynamics plugins. Okay, of course a lot of us are using many software-based uh, parameters. So an example would be, like in this case, we can actually cap the output peak of our entire mix of our program, whether it's a drama series or commercial, okay? We can cap it at minus 10, but however, there's one parameter within the limiter that essentially dictates you know, how loud or how soft the entire program can be in terms of loudness as opposed to digital peak, okay? And this uh, parameter known as the threshold can essentially affect the loudness of the signal. So, while we can digitally cap the peak at minus 10, which is essentially based on the old standards, okay, minus 10 and your so-called safe, good to go, right? But however, some people, you know, due to certain requests from either clients or miscellaneous people, I shan't really name uh, exact job scopes, 
okay, that they'll say, no, I want it louder, I want it louder. Okay, so in your face, man, everything in your face, da da da, and then this is what happens. So what you're looking is an example of excessive uh, over limiting, okay, where you can cap the output peak at minus 10, but as you can see, okay, there's a few parameters, threshold as well as attenuation, okay, and by pulling down the threshold, okay, that essentially affects the overall loudness to the point where sometimes either the mix becomes uh, distorted or it's just too loud, okay. Okay, as you can see by the attenu attenuation meter there. Okay? So, this one looks familiar to most of us, I assume. So, based on the previous tech specs that was given to us by our local free to air, okay, essentially you are looking at um, doing your measurements in terms of the overall outputs based on minus 10 as well as on uh, RMS levels, okay, which is minus 24 dBFS. Now, uh, if you remember, I mentioned RMS essentially is a measurement of the average loudness over a specific period of time. However, there are certain limitations okay, to this uh, kind of a measurement uh, technique, which I'll elaborate on uh, later during the actual practical demo. Okay? So, introducing the COM Act. So, what exactly is the COM Act? Okay? Okay, it stands for Commercial Advertisement Loudness Mitigation. Sounds quite extreme, uh, mitigation. Okay, the COM Act essentially proposed and recommended by the ATSC committee, okay, Advanced Television Systems Committee. I think I, Ian briefly mentioned ATSC as well, right? Okay, so aside from video standards, they also make proposals uh, with uh, considerations to the loudness of commercial content. Okay, so what's the whole point of having this COM Act? Okay, aside from telling people to calm down, okay, sorry a bit lame. Okay, okay to help essentially conform all programming content loudness to the same unified standards so that, ideally speaking, okay, when you switch between different uh, content that you're watching on air, on your, any of the channels, whether you're watching uh, your favorite drama series, a travel program, a documentary, and it switches over to a commercial, regardless of where this content is being mixed, okay, from different production, uh, audio post-production houses everywhere, okay, it should sound uniformly the same because, like I mentioned earlier, if you actually just measure based on peak levels of minus 10, everyone can still you know, cause a lot of uh, discrepancies in terms of the loudness. So by measuring loudness instead of just purely the digital peak itself, okay, you should have, ideally again, okay, a more uniform, uh, consistent uh, loudness across all content so that basically people don't have to get out from the chair, take the remote, okay, bring down, bring up, bring down, okay, which I'm sure okay, for us maybe still okay, for the older generation problem. Uh. Okay, so ideally there should not be any drastic discernible differences in terms of loudness between program that you're watching and the commercial breaks in between. Okay? Okay, essentially this was also adopted by the EBU, the European Broadcast Union, okay, which was first introduced in 2010 uh, in terms of the COM Act, sorry, not the EBU, uh, they've been around much longer. Okay? So the recommendation of ITU RBS1770 standards, okay, algorithms to measure audio program loudness as well as true peak levels. Okay, ITU, of course, standing for International Telecommunication Union, okay, Radio Communication Sector Broadcasting Service Sound. Okay, very long. That's why they shorten it to ITU RBS. Okay, current version is ITU RBS17703, okay, which was last finalized in 2012. For those who can see the text clearly. <coughs> Okay. Uh, essentially, okay, it started off with LUFS, okay, loudness units relative to full scale, okay, which is based on ITUR BS17702 specification. Overall average loudness of the program should be measuring around minus 23 LUFS plus minus okay, 1 dB. Okay, short term loudness okay, would be plus minus 4 dB in terms of overall dynamic range. Okay, so there's a bit of a difference here between your overall average loudness as well as short-term loudness. Now, overall average loudness basically takes the entire content that you're playing, okay, whether it's long form or short form, and, do, and does a measurement based on the entire content itself. So it's whether it's half an hour, one hour, okay, it'll take the entire content based on the loudness across the entire program, and then it'll basically do a calculation, okay, on the loudness of the entire program. Okay, whereas with short-term loudness, you're looking at pretty much if I'm not wrong, it should be less than 300 milliseconds. So it's pretty much like a real-time reading of the exact loudness spikes, uh, sorry, uh, peaks and unders, okay? Whether it's uh, in terms of the maximum as well as the minimum loudness, okay? So in terms of the ITU standards, what they are suggesting is that, 
No, you should not go beyond, okay, plus 4, okay? Okay, so if minus 23 is the standard, then it should not exceed beyond minus 19, yes. Or is it minus 20? Okay. Okay, but otherwise this is based on the LEFS standards. Okay, so just very quickly, audio signal is measured in its entirety with no specific emphasis on either the foreground elements such as voice, music, or sound effects. Okay, so moving on. So LUFS may be slightly unfamiliar for you guys, which is why LKFS came in. Okay, now LKFS actually stands for loudness K-weighted relative to full scale. Now, what's the main difference between LUFS and LKFS? Honestly speaking, there's no difference. The only difference is that the K-weighting essentially refers to a filter that is used in the measurement algorithm because with uh, audio signals that can potentially uh, contain a lot of bass frequency, so maybe you have music or sound effects that has a lot of uh, bass uh, energy, so maybe like low rumbles or drones, so on and so forth, that can also affect the peak levels as well as the loudness levels of your meter. So by filtering out all those excessive bass frequencies, if I'm not wrong, K uh, weighting filter is about 150 hertz roll off from below. So everything should be based on what you can actually audibly hear, okay, ideally speaking. Okay, so this is based on ITRBS17701. Okay, so the overall average loudness of minus 24 LKFS, which I think a lot of us are starting to see this pop up quite often in our uh, technical spec sheet. Okay, so it should not exceed, uh, sorry, same thing as well, short term loudness range should not exceed beyond minus 20 okay, LKFS and should not go below minus 28 okay, LKFS in terms of the short, uh, short term readings. But otherwise, overall average program loudness should still be hitting at about minus 24, okay? So there are many different tools and uh, plugins that can actually uh, help us to measure uh, the average loudness, okay, based on these uh, technical specifications, okay? As opposed to some of the traditional uh, tools that maybe that we are using, okay? And particularly with uh, video post-production houses, you may not have access to some of these things, okay? So which is why I always look for audio professionals. Though. Okay, so essentially LKFS and LUFS, there is no d real discernible difference, okay, it's just one is adopted mainly by EBU, okay, the European Broadcast Union, which is LUFS, okay, and LKFS essentially was adopted mainly by the American uh, Television, uh, is ATSE committee, sorry, okay, so essentially designed to eliminate discrepancies between loudness levels of all broadcast content. Okay, at the same time, it encourages a wider dynamic range because based on the previous standards, sorry I didn't have a screenshot of the old standards in terms of the range, but basically they were looking at a dynamic range of plus minus 2 dB in terms of the short term okay, loudness. Okay, so with this new standards of LKFS and LUFS, okay, based on the ITRBS 1770, Okay, uh, specifications. Okay, they are basically telling you that not everything has to be constantly squashed. Okay, because I think there's a lot of um, there are many different ways to actually go about approaching how to do a mix for broadcast. Okay, whether it's for commercials, I'm sure commercial uh, post engineers they would always find the instance of them always everything just okay loud and proud. Here we go. Okay, as opposed to doing long form. Okay, where you know you sometimes you want to actually have a little bit of a little bit more dynamic range to have a little bit more uh, creative mixing, so that you know you can really, you know, mess around with the, with the dynamic range and just create a much more sonically interesting uh, experience for the for the audience uh, at home. Okay, because previously with a larger dynamic range, you're probably looking at doing more of a theatrical mix where you can really, you know, have a, bring a lot of things very soft and a lot of things really loud. But with broadcast, there's always that limitation of a very a small dynamic range. So with these standards, they are pretty much telling us that no, we can actually mix, we have a bit more breathing room to actually bring certain things up and down, okay? As long as your overall program loudness, okay, averages out to what they are specifying. So as long as it's hitting, say, for example, minus 24 LKFS, okay, at the most maybe, okay, it can go up to about minus 23, okay, maybe the lowest it can go is about minus uh, 25, okay, in terms of the overall program loudness, which I will admit first, sometimes my programs are hitting at minus 23, okay, but so far all good, I think. Okay, but I think with broadcast, we've experienced also for those uh, post engineers that, you know, sometimes the broadcast side, there's the compressor which will sometimes kick in, okay, and then, it can sometimes do a lot of very interesting things to our mixers, which, um, for better or for worse, may make your goosebumps implode. Okay, 
So, just some examples of uh, devices that we can actually uh, use to measure loudness. So, we have the Dorov meter, okay, by Waves plugins. So, this one measures both peak as well as short term loudness over a persistence range. Okay, another common one that's becoming quite popular is this, and I'll be using this for the demo later on. Okay, the Waves uh, loudness meter. So, this measures both long term and short term loudness. Okay, it shows you the overall loudness range as well as the target. So, you can actually specify, okay, what's my uh, target uh, loudness that I'm trying to hit. So if in this case it's minus 24 LKFS, it will basically specify down there, okay, minus 24, okay, and basically how much are you actually fluctuating? Are you hitting the right levels? Are you too soft? Are you too loud? Okay, then this one, okay, is the Dolby Media Meter, okay, loudness measurement plugin. This one I would actually highly recommend that you actually get hold of this plugin if you haven't. Because in terms of the accuracy of the measurements, so far, this has proven to be, I think, in my opinion, a little bit more accurate as compared to the other uh, plugins. And at the same time, the nice thing about uh, not just with the Adobe plugin, but also with the Waves loudness meter is that you can actually generate okay, a log sheet. Okay, so you can actually compile, for example, across the entire program. And for 30 second commercials, it's still quite okay. okay but if you're looking at a one hour long form program, just to find out, okay, which part was too loud, which part was too soft, and then Especially with uh, broadcast content, we are always chasing after extremely tight PX deadlines, correct? Ah, no, everyone got very a lot of time to do, is it? Sure, this Singapore. Okay, <laughs> just kidding, yeah? Okay, so it's, a good thing is that sometimes, you know, in the event there's any dispute that say, hey, your program is too loud, too soft then at least with the log sheet that's generated by the plugin, it, it tells you, no, I've checked my entire program across every single point, okay, before, after commercial break, there is no point in which my program is uh, failing your QC or your loudness standards, or, or sometimes in the touch wood instance, okay, oh yeah, this part is too loud, this part is too soft, but at least you know, it helps to speed up the workflow so that you have to, you have to spend one hour combing through the entire program all over again. Okay, and the same can be said for the Adobe Media Meter. Okay, it will generate a log sheet for you. Okay, pinpointing exactly the loudness uh, across a span of period of time. Okay. Okay, so uh, very quickly, I'm just gonna jump over. Okay, so I've got a Pro Tools session down here. Okay, uh, running a one hour long uh, TV drama episode, which I don't think I should mention what program this is, but, and I will not play the visuals. Okay, just for privacy sake. Well. Okay, but otherwise, in terms of the loudness readings, previously, you no, know, we will cap this uh, content at about minus 10, and then based on the meter readings, okay, so I'm just going to use this, okay, based on the previous old standards, okay, they will be measuring on your average loudness based on the A rating curve. Now, essentially, okay, if you look, this is a very simple uh, metering uh, plugin by waves, okay, so on the two left sides, which you see the fluctuating levels, okay, that measures your overall output peak. Okay, the one in the middle essentially measures your loudness, okay, in terms of RMS. Okay, so if I just play very briefly the front part. Okay, so depending on you know, what kind of a workflow that you've actually uh, used in your own studios, be it uh, audio post or video production, sometimes you, know, you can uh, make use of uh, certain plugins like this. However, the limitation is that you know you have to constantly keep refreshing to check and check and check, you know, exactly am I too loud, am I too soft, so on and so forth. So the benefit about uh, using some of the new loudness uh, metering programs, like for example, the Waves loudness meter, okay? So the nice thing is that you can actually load up certain presets based on different standards. So if you want to follow based on EBU broadcast standards, okay, you have it there, but otherwise ATSC, okay, pretty much, <coughs> that's the one that we're looking at, or sometimes you can even uh, measure based on your dialogue levels, okay, if you need to. But so far, for most of the broadcast tech specs, a lot of them emphasize and say that they will not measure based on the dialogue levels, but basically the overall program loudness, so that regardless, uh, consistent, consistently, it should be the same. However, uh, please correct, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, if you've encountered different uh, technical specifications later on, if you want to bring it up, okay? So for this one, okay, just as an example, what we can do is we can actually measure, okay, first by setting, so if our target is at minus 24 LKFS, okay, so we can actually uh, determine like, okay, what's the maximum loudness that this can go up to, say, about, say, minus 20, okay? In terms of the short-term minimum, okay, the lowest or the softest it can go is minus 28, 
Okay, so that gives you your range. At the same time, your target level is at minus 24, okay? If you see there. Now, the nice thing about this particular plugin, uh, I'm not too sure if the Adobe one has it, but at least for this guy, okay, is that you can actually also have an automation going on for your short-term loudness, okay? So what we'll do is we'll actually write this, okay? And let it run in real time, okay? Exactly what's going on. And this one is actually based on the previous specifications when we were mixing this particular uh, drama series. Okay, so in terms of how loud or how soft the program, actually, if you've been mixing and you've been trying to follow the loudness specifications based on the old standards, okay, the amount of work that you have to do to adopt to the new standards, in all honesty, isn't really a lot. In fact, it's you've, you've, you've actually been given a lot more headroom to play around with in terms of your mixes. Okay, uh, particularly with long form. So now, technically speaking, okay, if this sounds about this loud at minus 24 okay, FS on a long form program, okay, if we switch over to, say, a short form content for commercial, okay, it should not differ that much. So in terms of the peak measurements, sometimes what we'll do is we'll actually pull it down lower than minus 10 dB peak because our loudness is already hitting, okay, uh, minus 24 LKFS in this case. Okay, so it's actually quite easy for short form uh, content, TV commercials. However, if you're doing uh, long form contents, then you know, it's a good, I think it's a good practice to actually start measuring as you're mixing, as you go along, so that you know, when it comes time to, upon completion of the work, you review, finish your client, make your changes, okay, instead of remixing or redoing the whole thing according to the new uh, standards, you pretty much everything is good to go from from the very start, on start already, okay? TV commercial is very easy, because 30 seconds, 60 seconds at the very most, but we're dealing with long form content of like 20 minutes, 40 minutes, uh, one full hour, or sometimes even feature length content, like telemovies for broadcast, then that's where you find yourself like really, almost I think borderline cursing and swearing. So let's try to avoid that scenario, okay? So this is just a very quick example of some of the tools. Of course, okay, this is just one example. There are a lot more others, uh, programs or hardware you can actually uh, use to measure loudness, like for example, the Dolby LM100, okay, which I think the previous uh, local network would say that, okay, based on the Dolby LM100, okay, this is the metering that you should be going at, so on and so forth. Okay, the current firmware version also uh, allows you to measure your loudness, okay, based on the LKFS or LUFS standard as well. Okay? Okay, so, going back to the slides, some considerations that we can probably ask ourselves, okay, is basically, are commercials less in your face as compared to before? Has anyone noticed, is there a difference now, or is it still the same? Okay, who says that, who thinks that there is a significant difference where you don't have to like, constantly keep switching the levels? Oh no. Who thinks that nothing has changed? Okay. Honesty is a virtue, so that's good. Okay, but uh, okay, I don't know about you guys, but at least based on what I have personally experienced, not trying to, to curry favor with anyone or anything, but definitely there is a bit of a difference, at least when uh, switching between long form content as well as uh, short form content in terms of our local free to air networks. Okay, so certain programs on either channel 5, channel 8, and there are some commercials as well as uh, TV series that I've worked on that appeared on both networks, and I noticed that the difference in terms of loudness isn't as drastic as before. Of course, this is kind of a, like a new thing because I think uh, locally we've only adopted these standards at the start of 2014, if I'm not wrong. So I guess it's a bit of a residu residual thing where everyone's kind of like play uh, or follow catch up. Okay, so but I think in the next year or so, we should be pretty much good to go, so to speak. Okay. Are there still discrepancies in loudness between program changes? Okay, I think I know the answer for this one already, so... Okay, has mixing for broadcast content changed in any way? So I guess this is targeted more at the uh, audio professionals, where based on these new standards, do you find that it's a lot easier, or do you find that it's a lot more difficult now? Personally, I think this actually helps quite a fair bit, because you kind of know like where your range is in terms of how much you can play around with for in terms of softness as well as loudness. Okay, whereas previously, you know, as long as our peaks were kept at minus 10 dB, right, pretty much everything is so-called go by feel, okay, which is a very risky word to use, uh, especially when it comes to 
uh, technical specification. So at the very least, you know, we, are, we have a certain standard that we know for sure is uh, internationally accepted and being enforced so that, and so that we can actually you know, do even better quality work. So maybe for some of us, we may not be working, doing specifically only locally produced content, but also we may be uh, churning out content for you know, the international networks like Discovery, NetGeo, HBO potentially, okay, and a lot of other uh, different channels, AXN, so on and so forth. So in terms of really putting us, okay, this media industry in Singapore on the world map, okay, I think this would be probably be the best way to go so that at the very least, you know, we won't be seen as a so-called lagging behind. So even if you don't care about what goes on here, then try to uh, look outwards and know for a fact that, you know, that you are following the standards correctly, okay, regardless of where you go to, whether you're doing content for Australia, for America, or any other parts of uh, Asia, you know, at least you know you are following a certain uh, standard. Okay, and I think that's the end of my talk. Sorry for bashing through this. Uh, yeah. No, it's okay. So uh, thanks very much for your time, guys. Please give me a round of applause. Thank you so much.